out your notebooks. And then what I want you to do, just to help you guys be organized and, and trying to decipher what we're doing here, is maybe turn it sideways and make like a columns. So you've got plane, type of support, quality of support. You can write this however you want. Other support for, and then against. And this is the stuff that we may come up with ourselves or you may think of in your head, but you're too afraid to share. I mean, you guys should know at this point that this classroom is a safe space for you to get any ideas out. Now, think of it like this. A lot of people think of a safe space as, as a place where you can't talk about certain things, but in this case, you can talk about anything because everyone knows in here that whatever you're saying isn't even necessarily something you believe. It's just an idea that came into your head and in order to figure out if the idea is good or bad and how it's good or bad or true or false, which is the case that we're working with with claim of fact right now, you got to put it out into the air and then we can talk about it because otherwise, you know, how are you going to work through that stuff unless you got a sounding board? So wear your sounding board, that way your friends don't get annoyed or offended at you, right? So where do they start? I just start by saying, all right, Perceptions of gender identity are changing. There we go. Right. Yep. Which is a good place to start. We have that one dude who looks kind of like Morrissey, if you guys ever listen to Morrissey. He walks through the first steps with her, which are defining terms. Yeah, we're redefining things. And so it's important that you notice that this whole essay is about claims of fact. We're making an argument of fact. And if you think about it, arguments of definition are also arguments of fact. To define something, you have to have things to back it up, multiple things, uh, preferably. Does that make sense? So a lot of these arguments of fact will be over definition as we go. And if you dial in on one, tell me and we'll talk about it and you should definitely write it down. So first off, they're defining terms. So what do they redefine? Definitely redefining gender. So when we do gender here, there's three different components that they do this with. So someone said expression, right? Identity. Identity. And biological sex. There we go. So what are these? And if you didn't put this in your notes, you'd probably want to. Yeah, what do you, what do you got, Michael? Expression is how you show your identity on the outside, like what you wear and how you present yourself. Yeah. Good. Identity. So if one's on the outside, it's how, you feel it's how you feel on the inside. And then what's this one? Genitalia. What you were born with, genitalia. Yeah, good. And then there was something about sexuality too, but sexuality is different than gender, right? What, how did he explain that? He had a little catchy way of wording that, didn't he? Sexuality is like who you go to bed with and then yeah. There we go. Who you go to bed as, or who do you go to bed with? You had it, it's the same thing, right? Waking up, going to bed. Exactly, okay, so they cover those bases, and then they start talking about each one of these things to, to flesh it out, don't they? So let's, let's start where they started. How am I sitting? Like a man, this is a man spread, right? What about this? Feminine. This is the feminine cross, how a woman crosses her legs, and then what's this one? The man. How the man crosses his legs. So remember, we're trying to be objective, and so as we go through this stuff, it's okay to question what's being said. That Did this all make sense? Did you find problems with it or anything? No, this makes sense? All of you men out there, you guys, when you're crossing your legs, you're crossing like this? No, uh, I, see I don't like it, that hurts. I see some yeah. of that, especially like business, they do the like... Like this or like this? They do, I don't know. I like both or like... The women in one building for me. Okay. <laughs> All right. It doesn't bother me much. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't hear all of what you just said. <laughs> There's reasons why a man might sit like the women cross their legs, and then there are reasons why a woman might sit how the men cross their legs. We already saw that's what happened with Katie Couric and the other guy, so they were already kind of arguing against it without knowing it. What are the reasons why women might not sit like that? 
Comfort. Yeah, you said that doesn't feel good. One is like stretching your crotch a different way and one is crowding or whatever. What's another reason why women might not sit like this? Rest. Um, breast or dress you said dress okay sorry men are always thinking breast so I mean yeah <laughs> I just made it worse didn't I there was a time when this was what I heard on the playground in like preschool I heard women who sit like this are pretty women who sit like this are smart women who sit like this get this like this no no one ever heard that one <laughs> That was like a nursery rhyme almost for us. Or That's what some girl came up and said one time. She thought it was clever. Maybe her older sister or older brother told it to her. But the whole idea is if a woman is wearing a dress and she's sitting like this or like this, then something's showing. And there was a time when it was only acceptable for women to wear dresses. And if a woman ever didn't wear a dress, much less sitting like this, if she wore pants or something like that, that would be scandalous. So there's something else that gets complicated in there, and that's culture of the time, right? That, that kind of muddles what they're talking about, where when you start gendering things, because that's what you're doing, aren't you? We're not just questioning gender of people, but we're, we're working off of a culture where we've already gendered things. My shirt, is this a man's shirt or a woman's shirt? or What about the color of it? It's, it's blue, so blue is a man's color or a woman's color or nothing? Okay, is pink a man's color or a girl's color? I say so. We're not talking salmon here, we're talking <laughs> pink, right? Um, and by the way, salmon's just pink, so uh, you're just lying to yourself. Yeah, the whole idea, you guys have heard that before too, right? That 100 years ago that those colors were actually reversed. Well, now you've heard it, and so now you can look it up. In Harper's Magazine, back in the day, Victorian women were talking about the fashion for boys, and pink was the hot color. Not just hot pink, but it was like the color. So that's interesting. Also, this is my mom's shirt. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think my grandma had the exact shirt. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got this when I went to pick up her stuff, and so I, I've been wearing it. You can tell by the buttons. Oh, really? I was gonna Dang. Say the Okay, you guys already know that I'm trying to trick you at like every turn, so yeah, I, I'd put it on and it fit. This is actually her smallest one. She wore like these big baggy denim, I think they're called like Canadian tuxedos. She's not Canadian, she just wore like nothing but denim all the time because she was a painter and so she, yeah, it's got stuff all over it. Practicality is another element to that. So what about this? There are things that we can really go and say that that's for that gender and this is for this gender though, too. We could, we could still do that with expression. Like what about holding hands? Or going to the bathroom together? Who goes to the bathroom together? Girls. Girls, right? Who holds hands while they walk? Like other than, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend kind of thing. Like, like girls hold hands sometimes, they link arms sometimes, right? Yeah, guys don't do that. That would be gay, right? <laughs> Has anyone ever gone outside of the US, like maybe Western Europe, anything like that? Yeah? So no one's ever seen like uh, Italian guys or French guys at a coffee shop drinking their, uh, their stuff and having their legs crossed like this? Because they totally do that. When I was in France, every single guy crossed his legs like this. That was just my observation though, so who knows? Maybe it was just on that street or something. Um, <laughs> Have you ever seen Middle Eastern men like walking down the street? My father-in-law, he's Pakistani, he says they don't just hold hands while they walk, they'll hold pinkies while they walk. Wow. No homo, <laughs> right? So that was interesting. Also at clubs at night, this goes for India and even like Middle Eastern countries where when they dance, the guys are dancing together. Women typically do their own thing over here, and men do their own thing over here. It is interesting, and it's okay to push back against these ideas, because we're still trying to figure this stuff out. So I think we went biology next. What did they do there? We saw like an old school video of something that maybe your parents saw in the classroom for a second, right? Where they're showing like the, the sperm going into the egg. 
did you like already know all that stuff because you saw a video similar to that in seventh grade or earlier? Or were there things that stuck out to you and you're like, I don't remember that or that, oh wow, I, man, it's been a while. Like when they were talking about like testosterone and estrogen. Okay. Like if it's, if, you know, if it ends up having too much testosterone, that's a male. If it's less, it's a uh, female. And then if it doesn't get enough of either one, it's, um, then we're getting another definition there. So first though, tell me, how do you get a boy? How do you get a girl? Okay. There, there wasn't anything else that they said like, in the video? They, everyone starts out as uh, female. Like, they did say that, huh? Right. So they say we all start out female, but then depending on the testosterone or the estrogen. You guys all heard that in middle school? Or whenever you... I did not know. Mm -hmm. You guys didn't all get sex education? No. Okay. Half of you guys nod your heads that that's what you remember. But you just said something. When do you get your chromosomes? That's the very first thing. That's when the 23 hit the 23 and you've got 46. And then it goes from a zygote and starts multiplying. So from conception, from immediately, you know which chromosomes it's getting. I mean, you don't know, but it's set in play, right? Mm -hmm. So you start out female? You develop everything. Do you? Mm -hmm. You said gonads. Mm -hmm. Why do we call them gonads? <laughs> Are gonads male or female when they're just starting? No, they're nothing. Are you telling me that women are so basic and simple and their parts are not even close to being like men so that just the basic gonads are already female parts and then they have to develop into male parts? No, they develop either into male parts or into female parts. The same thing that becomes the penis head could also become a clitoris, right? The same thing that becomes the labia could also become the scrotum, yeah? Well, I look at you guys in the eyes and say these words. Yes. And then I hold my hand out like <laughs> Kind of, but think about this, guys. They told you because they said it. And that's the one thing you remembered because it kind of probably was a little bit different from the thing that you heard in school, but you just assumed that it was the same because they're not going to lie to you. But they actually just lied to you, just straight up lied to you. National Geographic's, you do not start out female. No one starts out female unless their chromosomes have indicated it. And, and you haven't developed into female parts yet. Those parts take just as long, probably longer, to develop into female parts because the woman's body is actually more complex in that route because she has to do something with those parts that men don't. So all that stuff, right, even the testes, and sure, it is incredible that those parts can develop one way or the other depending on the testosterone or the estrogen, but what dictates which hormones you get are the chromosomes. Isn't it that your parts resemble female parts and then... The Which is because the penis has not developed, yeah, it resembles it's female it's parts because you can't the, see... Uh, yeah. dudes who have like the XY chromosomes as males, uh, they're saying that like when they get that too little testosterone, it's not that they have vaginas, is that they just don't have a penis, right? It just... Maybe. Small. Maybe. It's not that they have working, functioning vaginas. They still have testes and all that, it's, but there's really no phallus. Really. Really. Have you guys ever heard the term uh, hermaphrodite? Mm. You don't hear that anymore, do you? Because that's inaccurate. That's not a thing. No one's got both parts that fully function and they can copulate with whoever they want to reproduce. There are, I think, snails or, or things like that in nature that can do that, but there's no human that can do that. So we've redefined to be more accurate. And so intersex is, you got these ones, but then what happened in the womb? You got more testosterone and less estrogen. And then this one? The opposite, right? Okay. And so then what happens is your parts end up developing different from what these say they're supposed to develop as. Yes? Mm -hmm. Which creates complications. So it's really important that you understand 
what what's actually true and then what they mean or how that information can be used. So we've got we've got a lot of claims of fact that you could already be putting down like what gender is. They come to the conclusion that gender is what? It is non-binary. But then if you're writing a paper, you could say the opposite. You can argue whatever you want in this class, but you do need to hear out that side of the argument if you are going to argue against it. And likewise, you should hear out the other side of the argument if you're going to argue this one. Right? I thought this was interesting. So we talked about Associated Press a little bit, right? They put out a style book. It's called the Associated Press Style Book. And not only are they the best source for news, but they also, a lot of these uh, news sources actually put out their own style books for their own reporters and people if they want to understand how they're using information. But they, they will define things in here and they'll explain how you should word things in order to make it as clear as possible to the population. So whatever is the common idea, and I screenshotted this, and they had this on their front page. Like, they recently did this. This is still a big issue, even though, I mean, the documentary came out in 2015. People have been wrestling with this for quite a while. This isn't, like, brand new, but it is very mainstream right now, and it is so common and important to talk about or to, to wrestle with that, that Associated Press actually threw the definition up here, and their definition is in agreement with what they say in the documentary. Not synonymous with sex, gender refers to a person's social identity, while sex refers to biological characteristics. Not all people fall under one of two categories for sex or gender, so avoid references to both either or opposite sexes or genders as a way to encompass all people. Notice this is a tip. And this is what they're suggesting if you're trying to communicate information to the rest of the world. Because you got to think about what their purpose is. This is the most common definition that is being used right now. So we're still doing arguments of fact, and you can argue against whatever you want so long as you are making solid arguments based on other facts to build this, especially talking about defining things. So. Gender is non-binary, you could just as likely make the claim gender is binary, but you may get flack depending on where you are. You'll get flack for this if you're saying it in certain states or in certain areas, depending on if they're red or blue or how red or how blue they are. We get other definitions. We've got intersex. The reason why this is so important, how they're handling it, is because there was something that was happening for quite a few years. By the way, never go to a doctor named Dr. Money. <laughs> what did Dr. Money do? He conducted a study on two twin boys, uh -huh. and one of them had a bot circumcision. Yeah. So he decided that he was going to see if there would be any complications in raising the penisless boy into being a girl. Mm -hmm. So years later, the subject discovered that he was, was he was born a male, and he switched back and then ended up killing himself. Okay, well, you just said everything, but you're right. Well, who is the concept behind this? So he thinks that he can give them surgery without them knowing and raise them to be the opposite sex. So we get a huge concept here. And the reason why I'm putting it over here is because it weighs in on the claims over there as we go. So nature versus nurture is huge here it's gonna come up all throughout because it is a constant argument. If you are going to make this argument with a lot of the stuff where we go after this point, then you are constantly combating this. Meaning, whether if someone's arguing this is nature or this is nurture. So this guy tries to say, nurture can supersede nature. He says, I can take someone who is born this one way and change them through nurturing them the other way. And that didn't work, right? Because when the guy finds out, he's like, put me back, right? And then he spends the rest of his life, which is only to the 30s, fighting to make sure that everyone knows what's going on. Because after this guy said it was a success, which he didn't wait very long, and he only worked on two, this is like, he said this was a success. So people started doing this, and what did they use? What was the little ruler called? Oh, right. 
the phallometer, Phal right? Phallus is the, the yeah. Latin. So if it was how long? They're literally measuring. Less than two centimeters is female. Wasn't it a quarter of a centimeter? I wanted to say like half an inch. <laughs> if it's less than half an inch, then you change them into a female. And then if it's over, then you make them a male. This is talking nothing about DNA here at all. They're just going off of measuring it. That's crazy. And obviously you guys felt the same way. Did anyone just really hate Dr. Money after this? Why is it that parents were okay with that? We talked about this. Remember the whole Yale study where they're just like listening? Hey, this guy's got a lab coat and he's a doctor, so I'm going to torture this person. Yeah, back then doctors were a lot more esteemed. Now anyone who like reads on WebMD can go in and, and be like, no, I want a second opinion. You're less likely to just go with whatever the doctors say now, but there was a time when doctors' uh, opinions were, were like God because Medicine was kind of like magic to a lot of people. So yeah, they do this and they even do another study. Apparently there's just a ton of kids with botched circumcisions, right? There's like a pack of 16 they put together. And how did that go? Um, is that mean they made them all Most of them boys? And then they ended up- No, they made them all girls. There's two waves. They switched them all right away mm -hmm. because this is with circumcision. Well, botch this one, let's, let's put it in the pile. So they start them all as female, but- They eventually like realize their identity. So first wave is kids were freaking out already. No one had to tell them anything. They're like, what's wrong with me? And they have to switch them back. And then they have a second wave where they tell the kids that like puberty. So the first wave was like one third of the kids are freaking out and they have to switch them back. Then the second wave is the second third put me back after being told and then we don't know what even happened to the third wave, do we? Because they stopped the study because they just realized we screwed up. Unfortunately, at that point, there'd been a ton of people that that had happened to. So we know that this is wrong. This is not a way to do it. Later on with Rosie, that doctor is encouraging them to do the surgery, but is he using this? No, he's pointing to this. So the interesting thing is the parents, and they're left with a dilemma. If we do the surgery and she grows up and she's angry with it, she could be angry either way, right? So it is a pretty tricky situation, and they end up settling with what? We'd rather have her have a choice yeah. As opposed to not at all. Yeah. Wrong choice. We'll see, right? We've got this one that's in another uh, National Geographic's article. Carlos is 12. He holds a photo of himself as a girl. He is one of a small group of children born in the Dominican Republic with an enzyme deficiency. Their genitalia appear female at birth. Then with the surge of testosterone at puberty, they develop male genitals and mature into men. His uncle simply says, Carlos found his own rhythm. That's pretty wild, right? They didn't even have to do anything. And it just kind of worked itself out. So it starts getting a little bit more complicated as we go to the next family. And how does that one work out? We've got a new definition. We had intersex, and then now we have transgender. So claim of fact, this is not really arguable, is it? When we say nature versus nurture with intersex, it's, nature. it's nature and it's very easy to prove that so you don't get an essay out of that. What about trans? Nature versus nurture? nurture. We know nurture didn't work with the whole intersex thing. You still, if you're being objective, have to ask the same question with trans. And so that's what we're gonna find out. And you guys need to point to the evidence that they give us. So we have different kinds of evidence that come up and a lot of these, so types of support. Anytime you got the families, right? What are the families? So any of the families are testimonies or eyewitness. Now remember what we talked about with that. Testimonies are powerful for pathos. They help you get a very close look at something. So use that, but make sure you're also using data. You're using more than just one incidence. And they're not just using one incidence as, as we go. I'm just saying that's important to note. So types of support depend on how useful it is.
for where you're going with it. So this second family, remember they're, they're actually building an argument with this whole documentary. Did you guys notice? It's a whole argument. So you tell me with the Ford family, got two kids, what's the scenario? They're both male and one likes to be a boy and one decides he wants to be a female or a girl. Okay. At age four. Four years old. Well, one's, one's four, right? They're not twins. I think about like a year, I think. They're, they're off by a year or two. They both used to wear dresses, and then one grew out of it, right? Ooh, yeah. yeah, they used to dress up, and then okay. one still liked to wear the dresses. Okay. The other one didn't. Do they have any other kids? No. So. Did anyone wonder where they get the dresses? A little bit. No? Okay. So, remember, because there's always the question, nature versus nurture. Tell me, what do you think? Is there possible nurture involved in their scenario? Yeah. I mean, it's no? their choice to wear it. Right. I mean... So, wearing dresses, what else do they like? Sparkly things. At what point do you say that, oh, that means you're a girl? How does that even go down, do you think? Doesn't the boy like say that his birthday? Yeah. I'm a girl. I've realized that I am a girl at four. You gotta question this if you're gonna believe it. You have to question everything that you're gonna believe because once you do and once you pick it apart, you either realize what's wrong or right and it'll either strengthen your understanding of that matter or it will fall apart in your hands and then you'll realize it wasn't what you thought it was. So if I liked wearing dresses as a kid or bright sparkly colors, would that mean that I am a girl? Not necessarily. necessarily. No. This kid like, he goes his choice, right? Like he fully expressed I want to be girls. Yeah. We are questioning gender, but we're not questioning the things that we've already gendered. There's a lot of people I used to listen to, like the lead singer from Stone Temple Pilots and Nirvana. They both wore dresses. It's very difficult to tell, and you do not have enough information here at all. You don't have enough information to even rule on if nurture is the case. But there is an issue with, at what point does a child associate dresses and bright colors with being a girl? Or, or is that the case at all? What makes you think you're a girl? Society tells you or the things I mean, you I mean, maybe she thought from like, um, that her brother was complete opposite of her. Like, she liked these things and he didn't. Right. Like these things, so she might think she's different. My mom didn't like playing with dolls. She liked playing shirtless football with the boys until she was 10. And then all the other neighborhood moms said, get a shirt on your daughter to my grandma. She liked climbing trees and stuff like that. They called her a tomboy, right? But that wasn't... It makes you wonder when this stuff happens. We talked about that we mimic things, right? And what kind of movies do you think they're watching? It's hard to see because it's so uh, washed out, but that's definitely Elsa. But just because you associate with that protagonist does not mean that you necessarily... Or a female. Or a girl. Would identify as a girl, you just like... What's your interest? Yeah, but how does a kid make those decisions? So it's complicated, and I'm not saying either is right or wrong, but you should definitely be thinking about this stuff. It's something that you can wrestle with to actually make an essay. We do have something that they come across here that I do want to touch on. First off, with that dad there, I mean, does he look, does he look like a manly man? He's making feta salad right now. Someone might argue, oh, well, he's just, he's just effeminate and he's teaching his kids to be effeminate. But what about the reception they got? Everyone was supportive. Once again, I don't think that there's enough to work with here to claim nurture, but I would have liked to see a stronger example. What if there was a kid that decided this in like the middle of Texas with like super conservative parents? Because there are examples like that. I would want to see an example like that. So. Maybe if you're writing an essay and you're gonna use a testimony, try using something like that, because they're out there. There was something else they brought up. What is the hard evidence, right? We've got testimony and people saying stuff, but is there any hard evidence to point 
to trans as being nature? All of the brain scans. The brain scans. The hypothalamus, right? So what was the thing with that? Hypothalamus activity in straight males and homosexual males was the exact same, but hypothalamus activity in transgender women was akin to that of cis women. Yeah. You have to believe that you are born with a different brain pattern that leads you to want to be a specific gender. So this is where this is where we start getting evidence. Notice we have the chromosomes, but then we also have the hormones. And so while with intersex there's a visible difference with the hormones. What happens if you're XX and you get a whole bunch of testosterone in the womb, but there is no visible difference? It's possible that that has a difference mentally. Because that's the thing with trans, there is no physical difference in your body. You feel as if you are a different gender than what your body shows as. So the brain scans thing, that's probably the strongest, that's definitely the strongest evidence that they show in here, isn't it? So remember, you've got types of support. What kind of thing is that? That's, that's data. That's a study that was done, and you'll still have to go later on and look at the quality of it. But one question I want you guys to think of is, we are redefining gender, but we already understand that there's problems with the gendered social constructs that we have. Dresses are for women. Everyone wore dresses back in the day. You know Jesus wore a dress? It's, uh, it's called something else, right? Romans wore togas, right? Clothing was totally different. It's, it's really weird to say one thing is gendered and then to use those things to define what gender is when we already knew there was a problem with it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that's what we're doing. But that is one of the strongest arguments on the other side. So keep that in mind as we move forward. Why are we redefining this thing but not this other thing? Maybe we need to redefine everything. And then we get Allie, and why do we get Allie? Why are we now at Allie? Puberty blockers. Because Allie is 12 years old, so, I mean, I don't know what you think, but I think Allie's pulling it off right now. Yeah? Allie's not gonna pull it off for very long. Right. Because a lot starts happening at 12. Um, start getting different, you know, different things are going to start showing up and voice is gonna change. yeah voice is going to change totally so now Allie is faced with a dilemma and we've got we've got multiple things so first off tell me how Allie knows that Allie is a girl what is Allie's story because remember you should always be questioning this. What's Allie's story? She was born as a dude, but she didn't like being a guy. Mm -hmm. And then when she was like seven, she was suicidal. Okay. And she was That's key. Her mom, if, if she died, would she be reborn as a girl? Okay. Suicidal at seven, what do you think? Do you think kids can be truly suicidal at seven? Yeah. <laughs> About that. So young. It wasn't like she was saying she wanted to kill herself. It's just that you know she probably felt trapped and what. Okay. And like that's a, you know. I think that's fair. And kids are dramatic. Yeah, I was dramatic as kid. I yeah. accidentally kicked my baby sister in the face, not on purpose at all. It wasn't even my fault. It was my uncle lifted me up and my foot barely like touched her. Yeah. I started to cry and I locked myself in the room and would not say anything but please kill me or just kill me. I want to die. And I was like six. She was, uh, she was really small. And I didn't know about suicide at the time, but I, I knew I wanted to not be alive because I hurt my sister. And that was, that was just a thing that happened. So these are really good points. You're trying to get into a kid's mind with like at least their extent of understanding what that could be. Seven sounds very young, probably too young, unless there's some crazy circumstances to, to feel like that. How long did you lock yourself in your room and feel like? It was daytime when I went in 
And it was the next day. Like, oh, you lasted the whole night. That's crazy. All right, good. I would have come out for dinner, but but yeah. I accidentally stabbed a girl in in the foot with okay, she kicked it. I had a I had a broken a broken beer bottle in my hand and I was playing imagination and I thought that this was like for a torch and we were all like you know, in a castle or something, and we're at the beach, though, and on a dune, and she's up above me, and she's a little bit older, and she thought that was stupid, so she kicked it oh. with her bare foot. Ordinary. Yeah, and so I felt very guilty, because now she's <laughs> gushing blood out of her foot uh, for that, but yeah, and then all the other older kids told me that I was, you know... A monster, and I definitely felt like a monster. So I've I've done that too, man. It's everyone's got something like that that's happened where you felt horrible, and if you never felt horrible over something, then you gotta think about what's going. Yeah, right. So I have had students who said they work with troubled youth, but remember, troubled youth like kids where their parents are like selling drugs out of the house, or yeah, there's molestation or stuff like that going on. And some of those kids, she said, even to the age of seven, wish they wanted to die because thinking about, well, I don't want to be here. I don't want this existence. So that's easier to believe. But what do you think about Allie? Does Allie have a hard life? No, they just didn't like who she identified, I guess, identified as. I mean, I don't want to be a dick, but Allie has an Apple Watch. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. So this is 2015 when this dropped. So this is like 2014, probably when they're filming it. She's got an Apple Watch in 2014. She's loaded. I mean, I'm pretty sure you just look at everything else going on in the house and she's she's got money. That's still not fair to say a kid at seven who's rich can't be suicidal. The other thing is there's some other key information that you need to think about. Yes, she says she's suicidal at seven. Weird, but possible. When did Ali find out that she was a she? She asked her mom. Or... So there's conversation with the mom, but there's some other stuff. That other information that we're given. What's that? What's going on there? Oh, that she was right. Yeah, so different, but not like how the other one was. Ah, so Ali has a gay friend who is, I'm assuming, is Ali's age. This is all around the same age, seven. Ali has a gay friend who is seven. Now comes the question. Can you know you're gay at seven? And why don't you now tell me what it is to be gay? At seven or? Is this gay? (laughs) Is that gay? Mm -hmm. That's not gay. That's just limp wrist. (laughs) Talking with my hands or talking. I mean, it is interesting that there's a whole bunch of gay people that do talk Uh, flamboyantly or you know what I mean but does that mean you're gay if you talk like that what does it mean to be gay you like the same sex correct you like them how Uh, sexually sexually tell me that a seven-year-old knows that they are gay because they sexually at seven like the same sex This becomes a little bit more difficult, doesn't it? And I'm not saying that you can't tell at seven that you're gay. And, and remember, even if you make that argument and you, you can believe that, that someone can't know at seven that they're gay, it still doesn't mean that it's a nurture thing. It still just means you don't know what you really are until you're old enough to experiment and try that stuff out, right? That's like even in sociology, like society built these identities for you. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, same, and I'm not trying to say like that this isn't okay, and I'm not trying to say that it is okay. It's just I can see where society tells you like this is what you are and this is what you should be, and uh-huh. maybe there's an outside force or an outside role that someone else is playing and they're mimicking it or they're. Thinking yeah. like, okay, well, if they're doing that, then I want to do that. Or if they're doing that, then it must be okay. 
It doesn't mean that that argument is one on either side if you just say that at that age you don't you don't even know anything, right? And yes, at at a certain point you can come to the conclusion that seeing diamonds makes your You don't remember? Yeah. Like how does that happen? And can we say that that one's nurture? Yes. Okay. All right. Be careful though. How far? How far do we take that then? And it's okay, whatever you want to argue, just use evidence, right? You can have whatever stance you want. I'm not gonna mark you down for having a stance that I disagree with. You're supposed to not even know what I agree with. Although you may think you do now, but there's so many things that I've told you that may not be anything. Also, proof that uh, Ali's loaded. Oh, yeah. American dolls, those are what the rich girls got. Right? Barbie is like 10 bucks or something, but American dolls are like 200 or something like that. By the way, two boys go into the American doll store. Is that normal? So we're not sure, but there should always be the question, and there is definitely still not enough evidence. But you may have, you may come across some other stuff. So, what do they mean when? She was like, I'm not like him. Like, did she sense? What was that? Yeah, what was I she picking up on? Exactly. See, that's weird. It's, was it the... How was does it? a seven-year-old know that they like dudes? How does a seven-year-old know that another seven-year-old likes dudes? Like... Enough to know that they don't want to hang out with that person. Yeah. What? Do you guys remember having to be told about this stuff? Like that you were like told by your friends or the girl who was like trying to kiss you on the playground or the guy who was trying to kiss you on the playground because that's just what you're supposed to and and having the thoughts go through your head like oh that's that's what role i'm supposed to fit into and the coolest kid over here does that did anyone ever it's hard to remember that far back and some people can't because they never tried. And so they never made those connections in their brain. I have a buddy, he's like, I don't remember at all how I learned how to ride the bike. He says he does not remember the whole thing that he was told that it happened, but he has no clue about it. And I don't think it was tr like traumatic or anything. He, did, he doesn't say that it, like he crashed or anything. He just doesn't remember it because he never went there in his head. But like for some reason, I don't know, maybe I went there in my head over and over again. I'm constantly thinking about the past, especially after, this, as soon as like my friends started dying off, I started really thinking like, oh, there's these things that I can never get back. And now I start going there in my head. And now I have all these clear images, but I'm still not sure if I fabricated those <laughs> at this point because our minds can do that. Or if I'm just able to access more than I was before. So I think it's both. Let's see, what else do we have? There's so much going on, but the reason why this is so important is because Allie's going to do puberty blockers. And what do puberty blockers do? Yeah. Do they buy you time only? Let's say this. You do puberty blockers for five years. Is that just buying you time? Is your puberty just going to kick back in and then start where you left off? Gives you time to decide, like, if really how I feel. And, and if five years later after puberty blockers, can you just pick up where you left off, decide, no, I actually am a boy? Is that how puberty works? Yeah, that's the, the question though, because this is different than a tattoo. This is a huge decision. This is life changing, whether it's puberty blockers or hormone therapy you are doing something that is irreversible. Even if it's just blocking your hormones, those hormones don't stay like that forever. Anyone's metabolism starts slowing down already? It can happen as early as like you're like 20 years old, your metabolism can start slowing down and then you can't eat as much and burn it off. Let's say you do the puberty blockers until 22 and you're like clear through, like puberty is done and then you go off. You can't get puberty back. So you have to take more drugs to go through yeah. puberty or the other. This is something more life-changing than a face tattoo. 
You can't just get tattoo removal or something for this. This is something permanent. So it's an important decision to make, to question. What do you think about the doctors in uh, the way that this goes down? Him, any of them, the way that they talk about doing this, how do they go about figuring out if a kid should start doing this permanent thing? Like therapy? Or? Yeah, let me go back. Talking about tattoos again. Did anyone here want tattoos when they were like in middle school? Yeah, what was it, Divergent or one of those things where they like get these cool tattoos and stuff? I thought that was in Divergent, no? Where everyone's got these cool tattoos for like what like tribe they are or something? And they're like, I'm special, I'm part of these guys. And this guy's like, I'm part of like four of them. And she's like, I'm gonna be all six or, anyway. <laughs> I was in a punk rock and to be punk rock you needed tattoos and so I thought of all these tattoos that I really wanted in middle school and I am so glad, so glad I didn't get any of those tattoos. You don't make good decisions at 12, do you? If you got to choose what tattoos you would have for the rest of your life at 12, you would have got some dumb stuff, like super dumb. Now that doesn't mean you can't make that decision, and I do understand that she's not going to have pretty thin arms or a good jaw. She's going to have a thick, meaty jaw if she waits any longer, but she needs counsel to figure out if she actually is. You know, there is another way. Brain scans. Why not just give her the brain scans to see how her hypothalamus shows? We still don't know about the brain scans though. They're still like, it's showing something, but we're not sure exactly. Right. It's, not it's not definitive. Yeah, it is curious though, and it is pointing in the direction of potential nature. But yeah, why not just give her brain scans at least? Yeah. I can't remember if it was that lady or was a different doctor, but weren't there like people who did do that, like permanent puberty uh, thing? Like two of them, I forget how many like um, there are accounts online and you'll also find if you even just google it and you go you get on like Quora or something you'll be like how many people regretted their decision for it you're gonna find people who are like there's a bunch and then you're gonna find a bunch of people who are like no there's no one there's hardly anyone the the statistics are who do you think saying each of those arguments people who have already bought in right on on both sides that's the problem you are working with highly biased people throughout all of this because everyone's got an agenda there's religious reasons there's political reasons i mean everyone's reasons are kind of religious in a way people are religious about politics people are religious about atheism or about science people are definitely religious about science it is a highly biased field which means there's so many problematic situations with how people read the data. So yeah, there are a ton of accounts, it's true, there are a ton of accounts where people regret it and they go and they have to do a whole bunch of like, okay, now I gotta take these other hormones. There's no way you're gonna get back what you lost. Definitely not gonna get back what you lost. In the other reading, they talk about how much of your development is based, well, yeah, how much is based off of your DNA? First, people are like, oh, my parents are short, so I'm gonna be short. Has anyone noticed how, this is gonna sound super racist, but <laughs> anytime you start that way, has anyone noticed how like you would assume that Asian people are short, but then you ever see them on American diets? Yeah. They're getting pretty big, right? Yeah. I have like three good friends who are Asian and they're all like seven two. How much of it is your DNA and how much of it is your nutrition or your circumstances or your your environment there have been children who were in foster care and someone used the system they got like 20 kids and then they malnourished all of them so that they could keep all the money and there's there's kids who like never reached over like four feet tall and they're like 27 genetically they should have been like six foot five but because they weren't fed right 90% of it's supposed to be your genetics, but then all the other stuff, if you drink tons of coffee, what happens to those kids on Ellen who can do like no foot push-ups? Have you seen that kid? Seven years old, he's ripped, right? 
he's gonna be like no higher than five feet, even if he was supposed to be like six foot two or something like that, because his body's investing all of its resources into building muscle when it should be growing. So it all depends. That's why you're not supposed to work out heavy before you're like well into puberty. You should just be active. So it's, it's really interesting to see just how, how much all of that affects you. And so when you, when you are going through puberty or when you're blocking puberty, that's the time when your body is actually developing a lot of things that are important for you to develop into whatever your DNA is trying to get you to develop into. Yeah, that doesn't mean not do it, right? And when we go into that, that's, that's, the, that's the last essay. You're not going there at all, right? That's at least value why it's good or bad or when you should or shouldn't do stuff. Right now we're just working with fact, but it is important to understand the facts so that you can assess later on if you should or shouldn't do something. So, so far, Ali's got this big decision. Do you guys like the counsel that Ali gets? How do they talk about it? They're like, I really wanted it, so I talked to my psychologist or psychiatrist and they signed off on it. They pushed it through. They expedited the process. Remember we were talking about like kid customers and how kids will push things and say how much they want things? I remember feeling like I was in love with a girl so much in like high school that I felt like I was gonna die if I didn't tell her. And then I did tell her and she didn't want anything to do with me. Also, I felt so strongly about this, I probably looked like an idiot and freaked her out. And so she, uh, I didn't get to talk to her for like five years after that. She like was just like avoiding me like the plague. And I thought I was going to die and, you know, all this stuff and heartbreak over nothing because I was just like super hormone driven. Well, maybe, maybe they're not in the hormones yet, but I mean, it is, uh, this is so much more complicated than just like, because they want something now to do it. It's interesting, I thought, that they, uh, they actually do some parts of like their decision making and why they want to be... A transgender to their testosterone levels at birth and developing, right? Mm. But then they opt to block puberty, which is a process in life that boosts your testosterone levels. So wouldn't that theoretically revert them to their biological gender? If testosterone deficiency is what leads them to want to be transgender, I had a student one time ask this brilliant question that I hadn't thought of for like three years of going over this. He's like, why don't they just give them the hormones that they're lacking? To see if that does something, you know, to make them feel more like the thing that their brain is telling them they are not. First off, if that's not a willing thing, yes. then there's a huge problem there. But it was interesting that there's so much pointed towards just going along with your brain because what was transgender called? Gender dysphoria. That's what we used to call it. And if you're conservative, that's what you still call it, right? And to be fair though, that's what it is. You are definitely XX, but you believe you are XY, right? It's so weird because we're still just falling into gender definitions and roles. Why is it that if you identify as a man that you have to now start wearing clothes like a man and cut your hair like a man, why can't you just... Why is that how you define being a man? How do you even define the gender then? If we're saying it has nothing to do with genitalia, how are you then defining it? This is a, these are the harder questions. So when you answer, when you're taking a side and you're answering the other side, you're defending against the other side, you defend against their best arguments. You don't defend against like the crappy stuff. These are the arguments on the other side of this that they're not even answering, right? 
How do you define gender then? Is it a dress? Is it wearing dresses? Is it talking with a higher voice? Understand what this is doing to your body if you decide to do this and what makes you physically changing your body make you feel more like the other thing because you just said it doesn't have to do with genitals. It's like Michael Jackson saying it doesn't matter if you're, this is the first time I've ever said this, so tell me if it sounds dumb, but it's like Michael Jackson saying it doesn't matter if you're black or white and then Straight. turning white. Because he had splotches on his skin that he didn't like. Yeah. But then the nose job, come on, the nose yeah, job, though. That. Yeah. Does that make sense? Does that one work? Or does that sound bad? Because it works in my head right now, but maybe I'll think about that later and it's problematic. Like, are you saying, like, if, let's say, everything wasn't defined as boy or uh, female or male, like, everything was neutral, how would you exactly say this is for you or this is for someone else? If you're not gauging male and female off of chromosomes and off of what your parts are, then what are you gauging it off of? Because those other things shouldn't be defined as male or female either. So you want to be a dude and be like male definitively, yeah. but you're into like sparkly clothes and wearing high heels and painting your nails and all this stuff, then you're still a guy. It didn't change anything. Just because society views it as female activity doesn't mean you're any less of a male. But people have been but, doing that yeah, for a long time. Think that because I enjoy something that's defined as feminine, that I must be a female, or I must be a woman. So are yeah. we using the other thing to define what is... Yeah, it's, it's very... Okay, it's like this. The kid, that kid, right? Remember what we were doing with intersex with the phallometer? That was so fucked up. That was so fucked up. I don't want to do this to very many people. Like Hitler, I would probably curb stomp Hitler and say it was like, you know, because of it needed to be done or something. Um, but like John Money, that guy, I would want to curb stomp too, like the same way. Like you piece of shit, you actually convinced a whole world of doctors to do this to people off of straight up measuring their parts. Like not even going to DNA. This is in a country where they don't have any clue about that stuff because they don't have the resources and they just let it go and it, and it worked out. Is it possible that there is money in this? Don't tell me that there is not money. This is now an industry. Do you think poor people get to transition? No. I mean, and if they do, like, you don't look like Caitlyn Jenner. Like, there's work that you're getting done. You look like... If you're, if you're a woman becoming a man, you look like that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You're not going to look like, who are you even visualizing? It's not yourself. You're visualizing some ideal of beauty anyway. So there are so many complicated things going on in this where you have so much to work with. And the evidence they give could send you in a direction to help you go over it. Yeah, so you have nature versus nurture. There are things that are definitely nurture. If this isn't gay, then where did this come from? If talking with the flamboyant inflection in your voice isn't gay, then where did that come from? It's interesting, there are definitely things that are nurture. There are things that you mimic because you see in society and those ideals happen, but then that doesn't mean that it's all nurture. There are some things that could still be nature. It's just, what's our evidence? It's hard to find evidence. Is there a gay gene? No. No, we thought there was a gay gene, but maybe there is something on the chromosomes, these ridges. I think that was the last thing that they were trying to figure out. Here's the other thing. This is the cover of the National Geographics when this came out. The best thing about being a girl is now I don't have to pretend to be a boy. A boy can't dress like that? Yeah. <laughs> a boy can dress like that. Why can't a boy dress like that? That's dumb. This was the other cover. So this is the future. Tell me if you find a problem with this. Intersex non-binary, transgender female, transgender female, bi-gender, transgender male, androgynous, male. Where's female? This lady found it. 
<laughs> Someone forgot the future is female. There is no female represented in this picture. Here's a couple things that are recent. If this actually is something you want to write about, because remember, this is one of those topics that would be easy to bring from fact to value to policy. So I'm just gonna like throw these out there. Let's see, uh, why is transgender identity on the rise among teens? He starts going over a study that came out, which was really interesting. It's a very simple study. It's just going off of reports of parents with trans kids and they're reporting adolescents and young adults perceived to show signs of rapid onset gender dysphoria. And then when this paper came out, people flipped their shit. Rapid onset gender dysphoria. They make this a term and what that means is all of a sudden people are becoming trans in like hordes. Which, if that were true, that would start pointing to nurture. And so immediately when this came out, there's articles from Vice and BuzzFeed, all these other just tripping out and they are trying to pick it apart. And they actually try to suppress it. And then it becomes a free speech issue because now there's data that might potentially destroy your argument. You're just gonna say that it's garbage. You got to think about the scope of what the study was actually trying to prove, which is what the people in support of it were saying. It's really interesting. This is a current thing. You could write just on that alone. Remember, the more specific the topic is, the more you'll actually have to write about. 